principal sir head of department faculties and all students i dp singh assistant professor electrical engineering department gc bilaspur welcome all of you to another session of the global talk series a joint venture of gc bilaspur and alumni of bilaspur gc that is abject before we start let me brief you how you can interact to us during webinar if you have any questions during the presentation you can write them to chat we will take short breaks during the presentation to answer your questions now without a further ado we can begin our session our topic today is aerospace industries in india and its future prospects and amphibious aircraft technology and operations in indian context in particular and world in general today we are very honored to have mr abhijit sinha director and ceo shinmeva industry india private limited and our 1989 batch alumni of mechanical engineering he served Indian Armed Forces as an aerospace engineer for more than 24 years. During this period, he has also completed his masters from Indian Institute of Science in Aerospace, Aeronautical and Astronautical Engineering in the year 1997. He had joined Shinmeva Industry India Private Limited in the year 2012 and at present working as a director and CEO of the company. He has more than 30 years of experience of handling and executing defense contracts aircraft helicopter mro and airport services infrastructure sir i extend a warm welcome to you thank you so much thank you so much now i would like to invite mr umesh shrivastav national coordinator of global talk series <coughs> and head operation and maintenance rmc division ultra tech cement to share his views sir please Uh, good morning, everybody. Good morning, distinguished uh, alumni, Chawla sir, and uh, the complete staff of uh, GEC Bilaspur and the dear students. So this is the third series uh, of the global talk series. So this is the third lecture by uh, Mr. Abhijit Sena. So Sena sir has been working with the Navy, and then later on he has uh, he is working with Shinmeva as a CEO. and he will bring us some wonderful things which uh, will be highly useful for the students while they appear for interviews these are some novel things new developments uh, in the field of aerospace which we will get to know so i wish all the best to everybody to all the students i request them to be attentive and uh, grasp as much as possible also uh, put a relevant questions to mrs uh, to abhijit sir so that uh, i'm say their questions gets answered and they become more knowledgeable thank you very much thank you so much sir now i would like to invite dr m r meshram sir head of department electronics and telecommunication to deliver a speech of welcome sir please good morning all of you respected principal sir all hods faculty members dear students and alumni i take this opportunity to welcome today's global talk series webinar expert mr abhijit sinha sir is director and ceo of Shinmeva Industries and uh, our 1989 batch alumni. So I welcome you, sir. And sir will be delivering a talk on very important topic in aerospace industries in India and its future prospects in amphibious aircraft technology and operation in Indian context. in particular and world in general so it is our honor and privilege for us sir to have you with us today so i am sure we will be benefited by your valuable talk once again i welcome all of you for this webinar 
Thank you so much, sir. Strong leadership is the foundation of institute success, and all of us know all these achievements would not be possible without your vision and constant inspiration. So, I would like to invite Dr. B. S. Chawla, Principal JEC Bilaspur, to address the gathering. Sir, please. Good morning, all. Uh, in the third webinar of this global talk series, today's speaker, my very dear. Mr. Vijit Sinha, our very renowned alumni who is holding position of director and CEO in Sinmaiwa industry, which is global known industry. It's multinational, it's functioning in India. We are proud to have you here. I welcome you in this series. My senior alumni friends, Sri Jyotirme Arya Saab, Sri Uttam Chan Lal Saab, my dear, uh, my Batchmates, say Susil Sinaji or say Umesh Chavastoji. I welcome you all in this webinar. I hope this today's webinar will definitely be very much useful for all the audience. Today we'll listen, Mr. Sinha, on the topic aerospace industries and its future prospects, as well as amphibious aircraft, amphibious aircrafts. So not taking more time. I welcome you all again. And I hope uh, the efforts put in by all my HODs, my faculty and students, definitely it will make this webinar a great success. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Now, without more ado, we will turn the time over to our presenter, Mr. Abhijit Sinha, sir. Sir, I humbly request you to start the session. Thank you so much. Welcome, good morning, sir. good morning, uh, Dr. Chawla, all professors, senior alumni, and my dear friends. It's actually an honor for me to be speaking to you all, especially on a forum which is of my own college. It's a very different kind of a feeling. Actually, I'm getting a little bit of a goosebumps in my uh, stomach speaking to my own friends in front of my own college. My, uh, my gratitude to Dr. Chawla, who is a friend, philosopher, and guide. He's been my teacher, and he's a teacher for my whole life. Uh, I must also, uh, I had a dream of speaking to the students in my college, and I must thank uh, Dr. Uh, Rathor and uh, Dr. Shivas, Umesh Shivastav, who have enabled me to realize my this dream. Well, I'm not an inspirational speaker. I have not had a lump, uh, limb fractured in the war or uh, metaphorically or otherwise. And I'm certainly not here to teach complex engineering theories as I have never been very good at those. But what I have is about 30 years of aerospace in, in experience in the aerospace sector and which is divided between the Indian Naval Aviation and the uh, MNC that I work for. I have been a member of the advisory board in the aeronautics in the Ministry of Civil Aviation and as well as the uh, aviation member for the HHM. What I'll share with you all to, uh, today, primarily I've aimed it for the students uh, in the college, is that uh, what exactly is the aerospace sector positioned now in India and what is there in the future? Uh, within this, I've embedded the amphibious aircraft. It's uh, little bit about the uh, capabilities, technology part of it, and the future prospect, which is actually on the offering in, in, in India in a big way. So I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just uh, switch over to my slides so that it's easier for everybody to uh, keep seeing it. Uh. Is it visible to all? Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, uh, like I mentioned about the aerospace, and I'll I'll start it by a small question uh, to all that you would probably be knowing these aircraft. Just a sec. Something went wrong.
We have seen those things in few videos in WhatsApp, right. social medias. Yes, sir. Uh, is this uh, is the slideshow visible? Yeah, yeah, it's visible. Okay, okay, sir. So probably all of you may be knowing these aircraft, which is uh, like heard about it, uh, Embraer, um, uh, the uh, Dreamliners, the Airbus 380. But do you know some of these aircraft? I'm not so sure about everyone knowing about it. These are uh, HT2, HF24, Maru, the Kirans, Dhruv, some of you might have heard, Rudra, then the LCH, uh, definitely would uh, must have heard uh, the, this particular aircraft. Now the question here is that all these aircraft that I showed uh, in the last two slides that I showed, were all made, designed, made in India. Not many of us know how big uh, the um, uh, air, aircraft industry is in India, but it's it's like an elephant which does not know its own strength. It's a huge uh, uh, industry. Now, what we have done till now in the aircraft industry is that we have have manufacturers primarily I'm, when I'm talking about aircraft manufacturer, I'm talking in terms of the complete aircraft manufacturer are uh, HAL, we have NAL, Mahindra Aerospace after it acquisitions in, in Australia, it has become an aircraft manufacturer. Uh, there are others who are uh, also producing major parts for the of the aircraft. Aircraft models which have been designed and made in India are about 19 different types, uh, seven frontline uh, combat jets, three transport aircraft, four helicopters, produce about more than 3,500 aircraft in the country. It has produced engines, about almost eight um, aero engines have been produced in this country. We have also exported uh, aircraft and aircraft parts to US, EU, uh, European Union, Switzerland, Ecuador, Malaysia, and uh, so and so forth. On the global pie, if you see it, it's, it's about $126.6 billion is the uh, is the global uh, uh, costing of the whole uh, aerospace industry majority of it if you see is combination of military aircraft and the lca which is the light combat aircraft across the world that's the major portion of the money which uh, where it goes our military are uh, ever increasing and we uh, spend a lot of money in the um, aerospace sector because of this why i'm seeing all this is primarily because to show that how big an industry is uh, this subsequently I'll come to the fact that how it is uh, good for uh, India and it is future and primarily with the aim that my young friends who are in the college and thinking of uh, jumping into the queue uh, for the job prospects looks the, as an industry which is very much feasible and vibrant. Now, if you see the global players, I mean, I've just named a few are uh, Boeing, EADS, Lockheed Martin, Northern Grumman, B system, others are also there. And you can see in the slide probably the amount of money that they make, though the figures are a little old, the latest one, I didn't have a authority to put it on, the, on the open format. Now, and if you see the economic correlation, why I'm saying this is that with the air um, airline down uh, down times, uh, if you see here, uh, just a sec, I will. Uh, if you see the uh, light pink uh, vertical bars, are the airline downturns where the airlines have actually been losing a lot of money because of various issues, whether it has been oil crisis, Iraq wars, or the global recession and present uh, pandemic, it, the operating costs and the world GDP growth, if you see, are absolutely correlated to it. The uh, ups and downs of the world GDP growth is a direct reflection of the operating margins that the airlines have. So, so it, 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 you can safely deduce from this that the, uh, the with the growth in GDP, the airline industry and vice versa are, are uh, interdependent. Now the drivers for this global uh, this thing are our uh, aerospace industry, are the civil and the military aviation sector. Uh, why I'm saying civil and military aviation sectors together is because our, uh, 
the re stringent requirement of the military uh, aviation, not only the military aviation, all defense equipment and the civil aerospace have got a have uh, got a very uh, close uh, association quality requirements and the uh, amount of uh, investment that is, is goes into it. With the increasing military budgets in most of the countries, orders for military aircraft have also gone up. The market share of businesses and helicopters are also increasing um, uh, in day by day. And the market for regional jets are expected to go up further with the, uh, in the coming years. Now, if you see in the Indian context, if you see in the Indian context, uh, context the US, um, uh, Indian context, the uh, US air, uh, aerospace and defense sector is uh, expected to grow up to about uh, 70 billion growth, um, uh, 70 billion US dollars by about 2030. Now, if the growth of the airlines and passenger traffic is also increasing. It's about almost 15% increase with about 100 million plus uh, footfall. Uh... Sorry. Uh, uh, almost about 100 uh, the uh, about 100 million uh, footfalls in the last year that we had we have seen in nine, from 1990s when we had only about um, uh, air india and the indian airlines alone we have got a huge number of um, uh, private airlines like indigo spicejet go air vistara etc notwithstanding with in picture and jet um, uh, lapses we still have got a fairly large number of uh, private airlines flying in, in, in India. The growth trend is expected, I presume, to continue strongly in the future years as the economy develops and the fuels the demand for growing middle class uh, movement uh, uh, by air for tourism, business, and other purposes. This large growth is expected for smaller aircraft, business jets, helicopters, etc., for regional connectivity, faster. Uh, movement as the demand for business and travelers increase with the economic growth. Now, this data that we uh, we have in hand is a clear indication that there is a huge business uh, coming up in India in the near future. Now, I will take a, um, a small side step uh, here uh, to explain and get back to why I am uh, there. Now, with every defense uh, procurement and uh, civil aircraft procurement, there is something called as an offset. Now, offset is basically uh, when we are buying it from a uh, foreign uh, company in uh, big ticket purchases, uh, there is a mandatory requirement of minimum 30% of the procurement cost has to be pumped back into the uh, Indian industry. So if we have, um, if we have got a um, uh, 500 million US dollars uh, uh, worth of uh, purchase that the government is buying from a certain company XYZ, that company will have to put in about 30% uh, of that value into uh, what you call Indian industry in form of either um, uh, in form of either procurement or purchase or business to in, in from this Indian industry, which is from a list of it is not that any business that you take on that it will happen. And that list is, of course, available with the Ministry of uh, Defense and Civil Aviation. And it's, it's also in the open forum, primarily aiming as to boost the Indian industry. This uh, uh, method actually pushes uh, the original equipment manufacturers into pumping in and growing the industry that um, of the purchasing country. Almost all the countries in the world uh, has uh, been doing that. And there are various methods like you can see it. Not sure. Is it? Uh, is the slide moving? Hello. Um, no, no, sir. No, sir. It's not. I think it is got stuck somewhere. Just a second. Yes, sir. 
the yes. slide with heading Indian context are visible only, sir. So. Yeah, USD seventy billion. This this is yes, visible. Sir. Now, no. Okay. No, sir. I'm very sure as to why it has got. Uh, so you could refresh once. Yes, just there. Yeah, I think so. I'm I'm sorry, I'm just restarting that uh, presentation. It somehow got uh, uh, stuck. Uh, Okay, this is the slide which it uh, was the last one visible, isn't it? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, yes, now. Yes, sir. Okay, all right. So, like I was mentioning earlier, that um, uh, even for sake of boring, I'll, I'll just repeat it. That the Indian uh, aerospace and defense market is about uh, estimated to reach about seventy billion dollars by about twenty thirty. And this momentum is expected to further pick up with improving the infrastructure and the government thrust that they have uh, been announcing over the period of time. The uh, growth of these airlines and the passenger traffic in India has increased from about 70 million to about 200 million in the last 10 years itself. And the uh, domestic and international travel is further expected to increase, even though notwithstanding pandemic, which probably has delayed uh, uh, plans by about uh, two years, two to three years, but not more than that. Uh, it, it's, it's bound to happen. That's how the Indian um, uh, industry is, is, and the market is growing. From a single carrier, like I mentioned earlier, from Air India and Indian Airlines in the 1990s, all of us who, who are of that generation know it. Today, we have got private airlines like Indigo, SpiceJet, GoVista, which are competing for a share in the, this uh, rapidly growing market pie. Now, this is giving rise to unprecedented demand for new airlines with uh, placing large orders for airplanes over the next five years to meet the growing needs of this domestic and the international Indian travelers. This growth trend is expected to continue strongly in future as the economy develops and the, which fuels the demand for uh, the for a growing middle class for air travel, tourism, business, other visits. I'm sure uh, all the alumni of my generation and prior me and um, we have we've, uh, traveled by air much, much later in our life and it was uh, considered like a luxury uh, in, in our time. Now it has become probably a necessity uh, and that's why we uh, hear so much about the airline restarting uh, after the lockdowns and why it is so mandatory requirement. It's, it's, it's become a necessity rather than a luxury now. Now, this uh, large growth expected for uh, smaller aircraft, which I'm talking in terms of, uh, say, your ATRs that you see traveling, uh, connecting the smaller this thing, business jets, helicopters for regional connectivity and faster movement. The demands uh, primarily originate from business and some other uh, this thing. So why I gave this data is that we know that there is a big opportunity which is coming up. When I talk about a big opportunity, I'll just 
share a small thing is if i ask you all small um, uh, young uh, students in the college and all uh, to make a timetable for yourself so you what uh, generally you will do okay this year i am doing this i must get this much of marks or i must clear this entrance exam or i must clear this interview or i will do this degree uh, primarily i'll i'll urge um, uh, request all of you to make a minor uh, deviation from the method that you, you all follow what you must uh, think in terms of uh, say you think in terms that by 35 what you want to be say or by 40 what you want to be now when you say 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 you are heading uh, uh, you are a professor somewhere or you are uh, uh, senior management in some company or a senior official in a government sector um, or in your own business you want to do a business your turnover should be this you say that so and so year this is what is my target calculate it backwards if you calculate it backwards you would know that what you should be doing today the context in which i am saying is that you see, why i am saying all this for the uh, aircraft industry is because it, this is a career option which is for uh, subsequent years a future years which is coming up so think in those lines that the industry where you join which is in is on the verge of take off you join it you will probably be one of those early birds who will get the worm like i mentioned uh, earlier that airlines procurement business how it it benefits the industry that is where we will come i'll take like i mentioned earlier that i'll take a small side step here there is a uh, thing called um, uh, in the aerospace and defense procurement something called as an um, off, off, offset now uh, what it primarily means is it is a government's method of um, making big Uh, original equipment manufacturers like boeing i'm talking in terms of aviation the boeing airbus or uh, northern grumman whoever big ticket purchases there is a uh, mandatory requirement of a minimum of 30% of the contract value to be uh, pushed back into the indian industry in terms of either procuring things made by them or um, uh, investing in those uh, companies or investment in 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 forms of for a particular kind of thing it is not like that if i am selling you uh, if the um, oem is selling you a aircraft and they and go and say okay all right you give me uh, uh, trousers uh, what so and so and so it is a list of those niche areas which are given primarily again in the aviation field uh, as we are talking of aviation field and a few more are there so uh, that it has to be related to Uh, those particular regions what this has done say about if you are buying a item which is worth 100 million the contract value is 100 million 30 million us dollars will have to get come back to the indian industry out of that same procurement uh, from the oem this results into technology coming into those thing the quality requirement those coming into it's making big business and the most attractive uh, feature of all this for the youngsters like you all people is that it is opening up the indian industry for more and more job prospects okay now uh, these offsets like i was mentioning are either in form of direct you are purchasing or indirectly you are purchasing or in some uh, semi correct those are more of a uh, it, it's it's a more of a government way of the the mood point is that the money is pumped back into the indian industry the government of india through its make in india initiative have been trying to push these things which is coming in what it has developed is even though the in, uh, private industry are uh, not they were making a complete aircraft because that requires a huge uh, investment they are getting to manufacture uh, smaller items uh, or making designs or making uh, test facilities in uh, automatic test equipments for these particular oems and it is becoming a good vibrant industry now because um, uh, of this india industrial base which is growing up uh, the foreign oems the global oems and suppliers 
have started looking india as a destination to play a vital role in the global supply chain for aerospace components and parts that's how uh, there could be several advantages to gain from the low cost that india provides in terms of uh, the um, uh, low uh, uh, labor cost uh, we uh, we talk of low uh, margin cost and low operational cost so overall uh, they they tend to gain uh, the engineering expertise and the skills and the quality requirements which have been are associated with these big items are coming back uh, from them to these indian companies because uh, the one of the requirement is when they are um, purchasing things from indian uh, companies and supplying along with their items it has to be quality certified by the oem not that indian uh, clients so they insist on a uh, high quality uh, consciousness and the serviceability of these items now when this started with the defense procurement has started big ways aerospace procurement has started big ways the indian giants like tata mahindra defense reliant defense lnt and many others many many others have also joined into this brand wagon and started making uh, parts manufacturing now if we see uh, a space uh, manufacturing value chain we we'll, generally will have a research and design um, uh, development design you have manufacturing assembling and testing sales leasing and after sales after market is primarily mro and uh, uh, spare part supplier now the aerospace it, it's a very complex uh, and a long project life cycle now what we will focus on is primarily the manufacturing assembling and testing as this is where we uh, we find our uh, youngsters uh, joining uh, in the very uh, very beginning uh, many of uh, the students i had come across earlier had a had a uh, misnomer that one has to have a certificate for uh, aerospace clearance and then only you can start working it's not required the aerospace certification is only when you are doing the operation and maintenance of that particular air, complete aircraft now earlier uh, what used to happen that from uh, the uh, very beginning uh, that is from r&d design to parts manufacturing every bit of it used to be made by one single company and they would say going that has uh, changed that in vertically integrated manufacturing has changed to this design and system integration that is today oe uh, manufacturer like oem Uh, like uh, Boeing, sorry, uh, Boeing. They design, they design, and um, uh, does uh, the final integration and uh, the assembly part of it, and the final integration and the uh, flight trials. They have various kinds of uh, tires, uh, in, as you see on the um, uh, uh, slide, that uh, where it, those things are manufactured by different different companies. now uh, say the ones which are directly our uh, tire ones are say, say the one who is making structural parts you know okay when is responsible for providing the equipment systems to the tire ones these have they are responsible for providing the system uh, to the primes that is the structures the propulsion that is the engines the pneumatic system the flight controls and so and so forth so those are the uh, uh, major ones then comes the uh, tire to uh, would require they will require the parts to uh, uh, make those uh, systems and uh, some something to more which are given to uh, the uh, tire one vendors or to the prime uh, uh, sometimes then tire three comes is further lower and in terms of you will find a company which is only making solenoids or making pistons for a particular um, aircraft and then supplying now this is where what happens is when we say um, uh, we are buying an aircraft say from of uh, boeing and it is applicable even for purchase of civil aircraft by the government of india uh, uh, then the oem that is a boeing will start uh, looking for um, initially i would say till about 4 years back there was no tire one 4 5 years back there were no tire one vendors in in, in india the, that means there were no no one no company was making structures complete um, or propulsion complete pneumatic system some of the work now has started coming as tire one vendors but this tire one vendors would then give it 
some of the work to tie to vendors which used to be in india like hydraulic pumps or the actuation motors uh, control linkages uh, servo contract um, then again uh, further down right, in terms of solenoid pistols o rings and all so these there is a large aerospace industry hub in india in india now uh, spread across a majority of them are of course in the uh, south of india chel uh, where we have got huge number of companies we have started now uh, getting into manufacturing these in addition we have started get, we have now uh, say uh, like tatas um, who are tire one vendors um, uh, making complete structures uh, of aircraft like uh, pilatus and uh, Uh, some helicopters from Sikorsky, uh, Mahindra making uh, aircraft of their own. Plus, they are making manufacture uh, some of the wing parts uh, for the Airbus. So there is a there is a, uh, a huge market. Or in addition, of course, uh, because of pending some of the orders which are going to come through big time big ticket orders from the government of India, it is all going to. Uh, be a uh, make in india so the bigger uh, big big defense companies including like uh, euro airbus or america lockheed martin and boeing or uh, tricent co marine systems or france's uh, naval groups they are all <coughs> all tying up with the indian uh, uh, companies uh, for a joint venture or as a um, uh, purchases and setting up the uh, industry base for people to uh, start manufacturing uh, in fact to the point that uh, boeing last year had launched uh, a program uh, for indian university students and faculty and early stage startups to help innovators convert their ideas into visible business offerings that have the potential to shape the future of the aerospace and defense this is primarily there are a lot of startups also which are being funded by these uh, companies to get into the design forms uh, publications and so and so forth so there is a huge huge potential uh which is um, uh, there for the uh, students to jump into the bandwagon of the uh, air craft industry now uh, there is a uh, massive polarization <laughs> happening between uh, us and uh, uh, china uh, you will find more and more uh, of this kind of work being coming up uh, into in the india you will find uh, more opportunities in uh, in in india for the aerospace sector now one of the things that i, I want was to talk uh, with you all was uh, about the amphibious aircraft now uh, imagine a uh, um uh, 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 what generally uh, there is I'll, i'll explain from the point of view as the uh, starting from the sea planes which probably from the picture that you see you would have seen it uh it is it's a small aircraft it commenced uh, operations in 30 um, in 2010 in andaman and nicobar islands and generally is a r of the four to six seaters now when they started they they realized that it connects what it connects um, one island to another island within the short uh, span and uh, it wasn't it needed water body on both sides so it it actually did not serve the purpose for what uh, we want the now imagine that a person who is in say um, uh, nainital wants to go to bangalore okay now he, what he does he does he takes a train or a bus comes to delhi then from the bus station or the uh, railway station um, takes a cab or something goes to the airport takes a flight from there and goes to uh, bangalore now what we have is the Uh, amphibious aircraft is a little different from um, uh, the sea planes in the sort that you imagine a aircraft which is landed in one of the lakes in in nainital picks up this uh, passenger from there and it comes and lands in in uh, the delhi airport directly what happens he is only transferring from one aircraft to another aircraft he's got a flight actually speaking so called uh, with a um, transit in between uh he is flying from nainital to bangalore okay spice jets have started uh, looking into it this is something which i am saying now because uh, they there have been some talks going on about, about that now this amphibious aircraft are the ones which operates from water as well as sea i'll show you a small video uh, which is only for um, uh, the water based operation so
this is now it's going to take off the water itself now this uh, aircraft like i mentioned earlier it's an amphibious operation like on the right hand side of the screen if you see that it was the aircraft which was taking off from gota the same aircraft actually can land on the uh, runway at the immediately on completion of that flight now if you if you see here um, uh, this is where uh, the uh, the uh, undercarriage that is the uh, wheels are get comes and attaches down here while landing on on the uh, uh, runway the it lands on the wheel now you will be surprised to know that this aircraft is of the size of a boeing 777 on an avro so you can imagine uh, what kind it's about 33 meter by length and 30 almost 33 meter by um, uh, span height is almost about 10 meters and like i mentioned earlier that aircraft is basically an integrator so engines comes from rolls royce the propeller comes from doughty uh, though this is an uh, japanese aircraft uh, at the moment what we i'm showing and it's got a huge range of almost 4000 plus um, uh, uh, kilometers so that means the aircraft can actually fly without refueling from here to south africa and come back it can land in any sea uh, at any sea state and it doesn't even need that kind of a depth the maximum depth that is required for it to land is only 3 meters which is probably a little less than what your uh, 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 full scale swimming pool is so <coughs> so it's it's a aircraft and is utilized for a whole um, range of uh, um, missions from surveillance to logistics humanitarian this is a military aircraft version so that what i have i had written about the uh, uh, military operation but the commercial version of this is comes with almost about um, uh, 45 uh, passengers and about 2 tons of uh, cargo along with it it's a, it's a huge aircraft so you can imagine an aircraft which uh, lands on water wind about or on uh, airport only needing only 280 meters of uh, length on clear uh, water path and depth not more than uh, probably 3 meters of depth so it's it's a versatile aircraft so you can imagine an aircraft like this going around in in smaller cities like say like i mentioned earlier nainital or um, uh, say meerut and so and so for small small uh, cities connected to a bigger um, uh, bigger city uh, where the airport is so that kind of a end to end connectivity is is seen this is a something which the government of uh, india is actually uh, looking at and discussing uh, with various thing like i mentioned earlier spice jet has also um, been talking though the the cost at the moment uh, is a prohibitive factor because um, numbers are less so as and when the numbers increase obviously it will it will go up uh like uh, so like i said that this aircraft is in a military version is uh, utilized for rescue operations at sea from either uh, aircraft crashing at sea or any kind of uh, features you can and this lands with uh, sea um, waves height of almost 3 meters and above now uh, and what do you need in a smaller small islands it can't afford to have big runways and there's a waste of money it lands in um, uh, lands in uh, water and there is a ramp like you can see it in this picture there is a small ramp and the aircraft can actually go up the ramp then it's on a uh, kind of a small square uh, cemented patch from where the people can be loaded up onto the aircraft and uh, offloaded from uh, from these aircraft and it can be uh, utilized so it it is it is uh, the thing uh, in fact uh, in one of the uh, 
uh, India Today in conclave, uh, there was a discussion on this, and Mr. Gadkari was very, very uh, interested. So you, in, in the forthcoming, you will find these also coming into the uh, Indian market uh, very soon. So what do we have in the future? What uh, uh, the, the different sector like is, is a huge uh, procurement is in Vizaj. It is bound to happen with the escalating uh, scenarios. Uh, obviously, the offsets will be uh, applicable and the industry will benefit. Apart from the PSU, the private industry has also been included in the plan that the government has uh, for the procurement. Similarly, in the futures also, there's a huge footprint, like I said, about uh, the both domestic and international flights in from and to India. It's a strong domestic market with a large number of people moving uh, across um, such a huge uh, country is forcing the OEMs to set up an MRO. That is another sector which we are not touched upon. Maybe some other day we will talk about maintenance, repair and overalls of this uh, private airlines, uh, which is there. Uh, we do not have that facility in India, except for a very, very, very minuscule scale. Uh, and it has been recognized in the uh, last month when the finance minister announced um, uh, those uh, financial packages, one of it was this, that they had reduced the GSTs of this MRO from 18% to 5%. So thereby making it much more competitive and um, probably attracting operators to um, demand for an MRO in India. At the moment, the private airlines are all going either to uh, Gulf or to um, uh, Singapore for the maintenance, repair and overall activities. So this is how what we uh, feel is a um, uh, uh, with the India's financial strength becoming better and despite the ongoing pandemic and with the Europe's uh, um, financial position as well as the political scene going down uh, in terms of market share, India is bound to become a strong aerospace hub, both in terms of manufacturing parts as well as a complete aircraft and definitely a Definitely a MRO. So I, 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 I'm sure that uh, uh, children who are now on the verge of finishing their colleges and all, they should look at uh, aerospace sector as, their, uh, as a, an area which to go in for. Uh, like uh, we had in the past, uh, the IT industry boom in the 90s uh, and probably a, a decade even after that, uh, we are on the verge of seeing the same in the aviation sector. So my young friends, ride on this early as soon as possible look at the companies which are um, into aerospace sector. They may be like in a Tata's, if you see the aviation sector, may be much smaller as compared to their um, um, uh, uh, other uh, components at the moment. Or say Mahindra, if you see that there uh, is also very small as compared to their Mahindra, motor, Mahindra, Mahindra Motors or others and all. But by the time you have gained experience in those smaller ones of about three to four years, five years, something like that, this boom is going to hit you so hard that it is bound to go up. That is the time when your experience of in the aerospace sector of three to five years will be so, so valuable for you all to move up the chain. All the best. That's what I wanted to speak to you. And uh, I'm open for any kind of questions that you would like to ask. Thank you so much, sir, for your excellent presentation. The talk was quite informative regarding the trends and future options available in Indian aerospace industry. Now, I would like to request everyone, if they have any query, they can drop their query in the chat box. Vijayit ji, yeah. uh, can you uh, tell us something about uh, how many employments you expect that uh, will be generated in this industry? Sir, this um, uh, sector is going to become uh, the most uh, major uh, employment uh, option for the engineering graduates and um, uh, ancillary uh, degrees in terms of, I'm talking in terms of diploma holders as well as ITI sector and everybody coming in. <coughs> it is already, uh, it's, a, it's a big ticket number. It, if we go in terms of uh, probably numbers, uh, we will not uh, be able to say because uh, like in automobile sector, if you see it, automobile sector had taken a big 
boom but the numbers were because the uh, if you see per component sectors uh, costing are less where the per component items are higher uh, but uh, with uh, with players starting from uh, reliance to tata to mahindra everybody jumping into it is a clear clear indication that they are all are seeing there is a huge future coming up and with china and uh, a major uh, if you see the global uh, europe and uh, us are the biggest um, uh, aircraft manufacturer in the india uh, in the world uh, together combined now with uh, our present tussle between china and uh, categories with europe also not doing too well there is a huge huge uh, chance for those companies coming into india to invest more than whatever um, uh, the offset uh, requirement uh, mandates uh, boeing like i said uh, last year they had launched that program for the indian university students even for the startups now they have started uh, funding some of the startups for uh, their design as well as some uh, small scale manufacturing uh, if if you notice i'll i'll give a simple example sir every time that you are flying Uh, you are putting on a seat belt. If you just uh, roll the seat belt up, you will see a name uh, "Am Safe" in those belt buckles. Uh, I mean, say. incidentally, it used to be made. The Am Safe company used to make it themselves in US earlier. Those are being being made somewhere in the outskirts of Mumbai nowadays for last about almost four five years for across the world requirement. So you can you, you that's how uh, uh, I'm saying is uh, what we are getting. We are, we uh, we are seeing uh, uh, we see Dreamliners um, uh, uh, many of the panels which are being made in India in in uh, Bangalore a company called Dynamatic uh, we are making it uh, complete aircraft like uh, Pilatus and uh, Sikorsky helicopters are uh, being made by. Tata Advanced Systems Limited in Hyderabad. In fact, Tata won the Sikorsky bid, uh, competing against the uh, against Mitsubishi of uh, Japan uh, because they gave a better price uh, at that cost. So it's it's a huge huge market, sir. and uh, people so who are. It means our students uh, should plan to go for internship in these industries. Definitely, sir. They should Definitely. go for. training and intensive yes sir so this That's, will increase their opportunity for employment ab- absolutely sir absolutely okay. and they should subsequently join also those companies and uh, the um, uh, opportunity is really big sir i'll i'll give a, give a example of a small uh, um, incident there's a uh, gentleman called arjun mine in uh, tata um, uh, advanced systems limited he had joined uh, uh, with Without much, he wasn't getting much of an opportunity. About seven years back, uh, anywhere else, so he joined, saying that I don't know aer- aerospace industry. Me, abhi to kuch hota nahi hai. Uh, I've just joined. I don't know what I'm going to do. Today, he is become one of their um, uh, chief uh, business head um, uh, for ta- uh, and he's based in London now for Tata Advanced System Items de- uh, deals that he is. Uh, talk about it's it's because the expansion and you become those uh, precious commodity who have got three four or five years of experience from the aerospace industry. So we'll request you that once we will shortlist the name of candidates who are willing to go to this industry, uh, we we may have another session for counselling from your side. De- definitely, sir. Thank definitely, you. I'll be glad to do it. I'll be honoured to do that. Thank you. Sir. Thank you. Yeah, please, Dipi, ask students to interact. Yes, sir. I'm repeating it again. If you have any query, please drop your query uh, queries to the chat box. Excuse me, ma'am. Uh, the the problem is, I think, in that for the attendees, the chat box is not available. It's oh. not showing that. That. That's all. Students, are... please check. That's all. Uh, ma'am, I think uh, one question. Uh, one question has came, ma'am. Uh, one student want to ask. sir if the industry is on the boom on the global level and we have the uh, future opportunity but why the indian flights uh, flight industry is sinking and what we and you can do about this uh okay now uh, if you okay. see the uh, majority of the problems that we have at primarily of the two cases uh, which was 
um, uh, Kingfisher and uh, the jet. Uh, it is more uh, problem was of the liquidity and the price war that you know, they engage in. If you see the, uh, or uh, actually speaking, the flight tickets uh, that we pay in, in, in India and compare it with anywhere across the world, it's probably at least um, uh, four times uh, lesser than those uh, places. I'm talking of just the domestic flights. Uh, I'm not even talking into the international flights. So it, it's uh, it's it's because of the competition and in, uh, and it's it's an emerging market. So that every airline is trying to grab as much as possible, which will take a little time for them to stabilize. They will then realize that okay, this is the market share that I can have. Say about 10% of the market is mine, 15% is somebody's, and they will the prices will also stabilize. It probably will not be any more as low as we see it now but the market is growing it is it's it's, it's a requirement are, are not reducing in any form okay okay yes sir uh, thank you uh, uh, i think uh, dr ab mukherjee sir wants to ask something he has just raised his hands so do you ask yeah, yeah, do you want yeah, to ask I'm, I'm available here are you able to hear me Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You are audible. Yes. Uh, let me first thank uh, Mr. Sina for a nice presentation. I joined today. Uh, Mr. Sina, are you able to hear me? Yes, sir. Uh, fine. Uh, one of the uh, uh, presentation uh, you highlighted that a lot of works are being done in the country now. A uh, lot of industries are coming up. But uh, I believe they're all uh, mostly uh, in line with the assembly. And probably they are manufacturing the parts with the know-how getting transferred from abroad. Uh, this is a standard practice uh, just followed even in automobile industries also. But then uh, it has got its own uh, limit. After a certain time, you will find that uh, there is a revision or there is an improvement of the product. And then our industry will find it difficult to cope with that. Other option is that we have a good amount of R&D, uh, which means that you should have your own design office, improve on the products, and in those products, uh, not only you can employ a large number of uh, design engineers and employment, but also there is a profit margin much higher. So my uh, this is what we've done in the space and nuclear, uh, as you are aware. My uh, one question to you that are we uh, doing like Tata or Mahindra? You said that some of the companies who are already started manufacturing the parts. Are they investing good amount in R and D for the improvement of the products? Okay, okay. sir, uh, uh, I'm not sure at what point you joined. There was a slide which I had said that the whole, if you see the whole value chain, it starts from R and D and finishes at after sales. In between that, we have got something called as the manufacturing and assembly testing. At the moment in India, uh, uh, we are primarily aimed at manufacturing, assembly testing, manufacturing of component, machine components, uh, not that much, but assembly large number because it's a uh, human intensive uh, work uh, assembling. So as a result, and because of the labor cost being low, the global uh, manufacturers are getting attracted to India for the assembly part of it. However, the manufacturing part of it, machining part of it is also going up, uh, but at, not at the rate at which the assembly is coming up. That's absolutely right. Now, the next question is about the, uh, uh, the R&D part of it. Like I mentioned that uh, R&D, if you see at a, uh, a complete aircraft level, uh, not much other than probably NAL uh, and HL combined and ADA, the, which they are doing on their road. But other than that, um, uh, the private sectors are do not doing on an aircraft, complete aircraft part of it because there has to be a lot of handholding along with the OEMs for that. It will take a little longer for the complete aircraft uh, designing part of it. But they are having their um, uh, R&D for component manufacturing. When they are getting their um, specifications are coming from uh, the OEMs, they are uh, going and doing an R&D and suggesting different kind of manufacturing drawings from the designs that the OEMs have provided. And once it is cleared by those OEMs who are buying those particular components for their aircraft, 
then it goes into manufacture. So it has started on a lower scale. But like I mentioned to the uh, our young friends, that it's something which is uh, it's just about five six years away from us, or probably a little longer with the complete aircraft. The, like Tata's on their own have started a little bit with uh, uh, along with Airbus in designing part of it. Uh, there's a talk going on of the helicopter part with, between Mahindra and uh, again Airbus, I think, for one of the helicopters um, uh, manufacturing. So it, 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 it's 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 in a very nascent state now in the private sector, uh, but uh, in the PSUs they already had, uh, though um, uh, because of their own inherent or inherent it hasn't taken off the way probably the space program in our country had taken off more autonomy, I presume. Yes, uh, that is perfect. Okay, my uh, only opinion or suggestion is that uh, in case you have to go for self-reliant in a long way, uh, like the PM is insisting upon these days, uh, it's very much important that we you must absorb the technology. It's not just transfer of the technology; you must absorb the technology. And if you have to absorb the technology, you have to have a very good design office with you. And unless you go for design enhancement. In a component level, obviously you have to start with the component level. Uh, you will lose in the competition in a long way. So if you have to suppose ten years or twenty years uh, down the line, you are looking for, let's say some uh, aircraft, uh, Indian made. If you have to make, obviously to start with the component level. But the component level, uh, right approach is as it is being done now, now right now being done. You first bring the seeding. Which is already started. You bring the document, you bring the uh, technology, so that at least you are aware what is required. But then you don't get satisfied with that. You must put sufficient effort to absorb the technology and then go for improvement. Absolutely. If you are Absolutely. done in long way, certainly you will uh, uh, go for a indigenization, uh, which is the primary prime aim of the prime minister, at least uh, nowadays. Uh, we are aiming for not only in the aircraft but also in the defense. Anyway, Absolutely. good talk. Uh, thank you so uh, much. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you so much, sir, for your all your suggestions. One of our guests, Uttam sir, he too wants to ask some question. Uttam sir. Yeah. Good morning, Abhijit ji. Morning, Very sir. wonderful, wonderful your uh, talk about the aerospace. Uh, one thing you. came in my mind. Are oh. you hearing? Na? Yes, sir. Uh, recently, uh, government of India has uh, uh, given participant reliance industry about the aerospace, which is imported, and 30% components are to be assembled in India. There's a lot of opportunity for Indian uh, engineers. So there was a controversy uh, uh, regarding this uh, about the opposition. And uh, you, uh, at that time, we are hearing the daily in the newspapers. So I want to clarify what was the matter. Uh, I am not going in detail. Only political I was receiving. So can you highlight about that? Uh, I'll explain. I'll, I'll not go into the controversy part of it, but I'll explain the whole that contract was about. Is about. Yeah. See, yeah, it, it, it was a. It's a, a large contract value. Like I had mentioned, that there is a requirement of an offset, thirty percent minimum, uh, and and above. In this particular Rafale uh, case, it was about 50% uh, offset uh, requirement. Now, the uh, one of the thing is uh, that you do ask them to make. It's it's a misconception that many people have that if I am said I have signed a Rafale contract and I am saying 50% offset, that means 50% of that Rafale jets items have to come into that aircraft. It is not like that. It is a business terms in which it. So they are actually in the process of manufacturing and which will their long term plan is about seven years from now. Uh, they are uh, doing making an aircraft parts of a, another aircraft, which will subsequently be transferred completely to them for manufacturing complete aircraft in, in India by them. It's uh, now you can imagine when it is uh, uh, projects are worth about um, say. Uh, uh, 50 million, 20 billion, 30 percent of that uh, is a huge, huge uh, chunk of money, and probably Reliance Defence is, uh, if I'm not wrong, was some 
six to seven percent of that amount was the one which was the business to them. Uh, uh, yeah. Was going to them. I I consider it as as an offset, a company which is manufacturing it. Rest of the political controversies, I wouldn't like to. No, uh, I don't uh, want to go into political controversy. But uh, this is uh, Dr. Chawla is uh, pointed over the uh, engineer's opportunity. So I am going to in that direction. If government yeah. will support the next five years when the Rafal will come and Rafal parts will be manufactured, so the good opportunity for the young engineer generation. That is my point. So some parts of Rafals are already started manufacturing in Reliance Defence in in. Uh, Uh, nasik and um, yeah. uh, uh, and uh, also for uh, aircraft um, um, falcon is the aircraft for which they are uh, doing the major part of the work but it, it's a, it's a yeah. definitely an opportunity for our youngsters to go initially, there and yes. initially absolutely yes 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 i agree with you thank you thank you for yes. thank you sir uh, thank you so much sir uh, Another guest, Swati Pal, ma'am. Uh, I think she wants to say something. Swati. Yes. Uh, yes. Thank you so much, Commander Sena. I come from a non-technical background, so I have obviously a very uh, layman's question to ask. First and foremost, I want to compliment you on a very uh, simple, simply explained but in detail uh, a topic which I think a lot of us are curious about. Uh, so as i said i come from a non technical background so i have a very simple question to ask which is that given the current situation where uh, market predictions about uh, aircraft and aircraft construction seem rather dismal to us as i said those of us who are in the non technical zone what would be your predictions regarding uh, you know the construction of such amphibious aircraft not just in india but in other parts of the world Would you be able to make a kind of a rational prediction about it? Thanks. Okay. Uh, see, uh, the uh, world at large is now looking at uh, the amphibious operations because uh, of the rising real estate cost in, of for operating airports from many cities. You can imagine the <laughs> say for a city like Delhi itself, uh, it's got a huge real estate uh, area which is being occupied. so if you have natural water bodies which are obviously um, uh, environment friendly and you are able to operate uh, from those um, airports that's that's going to be the most um, uh, beneficial for everyone and it reduces the real estate cost um, uh, on to the airport uh, operators uh, in a big way that not withstanding that but that's a long way off where you have Uh, that kind in a big cities, but it is helping in terms of connecting up the smaller cities to the larger uh, airport hubs for the aircraft to take. But as far as the commercial part is concerned, uh, especially in countries uh, which has got uh, uh, something like in our country, uh, we definitely uh, look at it. Uh, the at the moment the prohibitive factor in this particular thing has been because the numbers are low. Uh, the demands have not yet uh, come up much so the per piece uh, costing for each of these aircraft is uh, really really high uh, we do not have the or none of the manufacturers have the uh, benefit of uh, economy of scale so as a resultant uh, it's it's a uh, cat and uh, no chicken and egg situation uh, rather as which one will go in first Uh, but um, uh, with the present government of india's uh, long term plan which is uh, under that udan scheme you know, they have this uh, thing in their mind uh, they had ambitiously tried to launch it with uh, our prime minister modi flying in a sea plane from ahmedabad uh, to i think uh, one another city uh, close by uh, but uh, subsequently um, uh, it will probably take in a little back seat for the time being uh, again like i mentioned because of the economy factor uh, but it it's uh, amphibious aircraft operations are something which is definitely going to uh, come into our country uh, mm-hmm. if not very late very soon it's thank you thank you sir uh, i think sushil sinha sir he too wants to ask something sir am i audible to you yes yeah. very much audible good afternoon mr abhijit 
Good afternoon, sir. Yeah, it was a very informative talk and not many useful insights you have provided in the engineering side of the aerospace. There was one uh, interesting question asked about the R&D in the aerospace. Yes, sir. Uh, you had given an example about the buckles being manufactured very close to Mumbai. I am staying in Mumbai. Yeah, sure. that uh, buckle story is again a story of the R&D. We should not yeah. think that this is a very small part. Yeah. That R&D goes behind the buckle also is a R&D which the, is a challenging one. Yes. If, if people are aware about how the Apple has started the iPhone, even each of its screw has the R&D patent. True. So patent and R&D is not that it is very big thing which we have to do about. Yeah. Even the smallest thing, if it is done in a very useful and techno-friendly way, that is a that calls for a R&D project. What I am trying to understand from you, how the DRDO is helping us in developing the things, because I know that DRDO has been very much active in the light compact aircraft, then avionics for the Sukhoi, etc. Those are, of course, obviously the result of the R&D which has been done within India itself. So how do you talk about this R&D effort which is being currently done, and how do you see its future prospects? Uh, sir, uh, as a, there are two uh, divisions like you mentioned also. One is an R&D for a complete aircraft designing and manufacturing and uh, the other is at the component and subcomponent uh, level. Uh, what, uh, if I remember correctly, my, uh, the other guest had asked was about uh, the complete aircraft uh, R&D part of it. That is now has been restricted to uh, organizations which a government organization like HL, uh, NAL and uh, ADA uh, primarily uh, in, uh, some of it, it comes under DRDO and uh, subsequently uh, but in the private sector complete aircraft uh, R&D has not yet started uh, if you if you uh, see um, uh, over the years uh, every organization or every aircraft manufacturer when they have started making manufacturing a complete aircraft uh, it's, they started with uh, uh, probably making it as a bought out design or uh, with the support or as a joint venture with some other companies uh, except from origins like Boeing or somebody. But otherwise, all of them have they do a little bit of hand holding probably first and subsequently they come and start manufacturing their own designs and uh, thing. component level designing uh, DRDO has been doing. Because we have had, a, like I had mentioned in the slides earlier, we have got a large number, about 19 odd types of aircraft that have been manufactured in India. A large number of them have been designed and developed in India. The components for them are, uh, have come from various uh, PSUs like Bell and um, uh, HAL and uh, others. And there have been uh, designing uh, being done by them. Uh, but the private sector is uh, at the moment has not gone beyond probably designing part component um, um, uh, manufacturing. Uh, it's it's uh, like sir uh, R and D. You need a very deep pocket. The companies have to be really having a good going business, and then only they will start in a full scale uh, R and D, small scale business wise. That's what they are doing at the moment. They have started in terms of uh, R and D on. Uh, assembly and testing method or some of the component manufacturing uh, they go back with their revised uh, designs or pro uh, uh, proposals to the OEMs who clears those things uh, accepts those designs and then they are doing it probably like I said that a few years um, another few years and down the line we'll start seeing private players making uh, big orders yeah, Vijit, thank you very much. That was a real right way to move into a bigger thing. And yes. deep pocket is one of the essentiality. There is no doubt about it. Yeah. Uh, my supplementary question on this is, uh, I think everybody might have heard about Amol Yadav. Amol Yadav who has created the twin engine turboprop plane on the rooftop of one of the Bombay buildings. Sure. So how do you think uh, this is a process which is going to be successful in near future because the government is also interested in that particular project? Uh, sir, the issue is like this. Uh, manufacturing, the, nobody can stop, but uh, the government cannot stop any individuals to manufacture it. 
but there are uh, unlike in other many other sectors uh, uh, in the aerospace sector there are a lot of strict government regulations by which uh, before which the aircraft is allowed to fly uh, even for the testing purpose or subsequently because it's not only a, it's a, a potential danger for the persons who is flying that aircraft it's a potential danger for many of the other people uh, uh, around so as a result and because of that we have like in the civil we have got an organization called dgca uh, director general of civil aviation who has to give a clearance and certify each and every process sheets each and every component each and every uh, system integration method each and every testing that has to be done uh, as per their requirement uh, so uh, they will uh, have to go through that and uh, unlike uh, like today if i want to design a um, uh, motorcycle of my own complete together i'll probably still get away by making it and riding it uh, not as much or if i want to design a uh, tv monitor or something like that i can do it and do it trial on my own but not in the aircraft sector so um, uh, yes individuals are welcome as long as they are able to follow the uh, um, certification process that is involved with it very rightly said very yeah. right yes sir vijay yeah. thank you very much and my best wishes to our students thank yes you. aerospace industry is going to go up and people should uh, look for that as a good opportunity thank you very much thank you so much sir sir we have another query would you like to take that uh, please go ahead Uh, so one of our student uh, siddharth gupta he wants to uh, ask sir what is the scope of electric planes in aerospace industry as we are seeing that the technology is thriving uh electric planes in the sense that uh, see it's it's a primarily uh, any it's like any other or like automobile sector as well uh, in 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 this case uh, obviously you will uh, are referring to probably um, solar solar cells or something like that even we have as and when the solar technology becomes better and better we'll see more of those there have been trials which has been making but you need huge uh, surface area exposed to the sun to generate the kind of uh, thrust that is required to or drive the motors um, uh, that is required to develop those lift that the aircraft needs you know, to follow so um, uh, thoda time hai I, i presume before it becomes commercially possible though it is there in the in those x series uh, aircraft a uh, couple of them have been tried out uh, light uh, aircraft which are solar paneled uh, but not as a commercial purpose thank you so much sir vivek sir do you have any question hello vivek sir we can go for feedback jp sir yes sir we could proceed further yeah, so yeah. now i would like to invite mr uday khakha sir assistant professor mechanical engineering to start the student feedback session uday sir uh, thank you ma'am uh, good afternoon respected guests principal sir hod electrical and etnt my dear colleagues and my dear students um first of all i would like to thank mr ajit sinha sir for taking some of his valuable time and delivering a talk and sharing his knowledge and some experiences thank you very much sir uh, moving on i would like to invite some of the students uh, to give their thoughts of today's expert lecture uh, first i would like to invite gedhari belani etnt 8 semester to give his feedback gedhari please uh, unmute your mic and please proceed forward thank you sir Welcome all of you. I am very thankful to Mr. Abhijit Sinha sir for this very informative session. I found this session really helpful and knowledgeable. This helps us to choose aerospace as a better career option. Thank you. Thank you, Gidhari. Uh, next, I have another student from ETNT six semester, Siddharth Mohbia. Uh, Siddharth, can you please unmute your mic and give your feedback on this session? We were blessed to have your presence in this webinar, sir, and your presence truly mesmerized us. Our mind in, and our mind in the field of aeronautics. 
your euphonic conversation has paved the powerful urge about the industry the kind of exposure you provided us is exactly what we need in placement and pre-placement years it was a tremendous gain in knowledge for us and a student across the streams and batches to conclude i would like to say that it was a very intellectual experience that imparted a radical change in us and we'll look forward into this industry okay thank you siddhant uh, that was like kind of very uh, special words chosen just for your visit sir um, next i would like to invite uh, rupesh chandrapal from uh, mechanical 8 semester um, rupesh can you please share your thoughts yes sir hello everyone first of all i would like to thank abhijit sir no, sir for sharing his valuable time with all of us and also our college faculties for providing such a wonderful opportunities to talk all of our uh, alumni so sir your presentation on aerospace industries was not only informative but it also gave us the idea to uh, explore our vision in aerospace industries and we would love as being an engineering graduate we would really look forward towards the aerospace industries in the coming future thank you sir thank you so much okay moving forward uh, next i would like to invite dhaniram from mechanical 6 semester uh, to give his feedback dhani good afternoon sir i would like to thank to you to give us great information about aerospace industry the program session was really good uh, the talk was also really good sir thank you sir thank you so much thank you so much thank you dhani uh, moving on to the next uh, uh, lastly i would like to invite prajakta khetkar electrical 6 semester uh, uh, to say few words on today's talk prajakta yes this session has proved to be a great tool in providing us with really valuable information about the aerospace industry and the future prospects in the field and also about the amphibious uh, aircraft and its operation we are all very glad and thankful to respected sir for taking out his time and sharing his information making us aware about it and giving us a broad view in it uh, i really hope this will be very helpful and beneficial to us in your future thank you sir thank you so much thank you projecta uh, i would also like to thank uh, abhijit sir once again because it was also very um, knowledgeable for me i also got a few like a glimpse of what we as a mechanical engineer had in um, a scope in uh, in auto uh, sorry in aircraft industries and i i would also like to um, motivate our students to uh, like search in this area thank you very much sir uh, moving forward uh, i would like um, dp ma'am to take the mic and uh, proceed the session uh, thank you so much uday sir uh, now moving forward with equal pleasure i would like to invite dr sk singhai sir head of department electrical engineering for vote of thanks sir so please thank you dp thank you dp Welcome, respected dignitaries my colleague professors and my dear students first of all i am very much thankful to abhijit sena sir he is a director and ceo of shimaiwa industries and he is also our alumni he took uh, his precious time to for our students and some of the facts which he gave during the presentation were very very much interesting to me also i never knew that it is a 126 billion dollar industry an aircraft a full fledged aircraft has almost 6 million parts and these parts come from all over the world so lot of scope is there i came to know that uh, there are almost 2000 big aircrafts are being produced every year in the world and cost of one aircraft may go up to 400 million us dollar it means single aircraft may be of 32000 crores rupees so it is definitely a huge huge industry and our students of mechanical electrical and electronics engineering they have a lot of scope and uh, many times i am a teacher of uh, microprocessor so many times i ask my students that how many microprocessors are there in a car so my students sometimes answer 1 2 or 10 maximum when i say them the almost 50 microprocessors are working then they get very much uh, it is a very different kind of information to them 
एन एयरक्राफ्ट में हैव ऑलमोस्ट वन थाउजेंड माइक्रो प्रोसेस इवन मोर देन वन वन थाउजेंड माइक्रो प्रोसेस ऑन बोर्ड एंड मोर देन वन थाउजेंड कंप्यूटर्स ऑफ बोर्ड टू नेविगेट द प्लेन सो लॉट ऑफ स्कोप इज देयर फॉर ऑल अवर इंजीनियरिंग स्टूडेंट एंड द वैल्यूज विच सर है शोन इज डेफिनेटली एस्टोनिश सर ऑल्सो गेव अस ए ओवर व्यू ऑफ एम पी वी एस एयरक्राफ्ट विच कैन लैंड ऑन लैंड एज वेल एज ऑन वाटर एंड इट विल बी ए बूम फॉर इंडस्ट्री एविएशन इंडस्ट्री इफ दे आर प्रोड्यूस इकोनॉमिकली दो विजिटेड मेनी आईलैंड नेशन लाइक सिंगापुर दे वंडर दैट वाई द बिल्डिंग्स इन नेबरिंग कंट्री आर वेरी हाई बट इन सिंगापुर इट इज लिमिटेड टू टू एटी मीटर सिंपली बिकॉज इफ यू मेक वेरी टॉल बिल्डिंग्स इन सिंगापुर यू के नॉट लैंड द प्लेन्स so that kind of problem will also get elevated if these uh, amphibian aircrafts come into the picture thank you so much sir for giving us your precious time and i would like you to be connected with us and our students and give them your precious uh, suggestions whenever they ask for it i am also thankful to umesh shrivastav sir who is global coordinator for this talk series this is one of the very successful series which we are having in, in our institute we are also thankful to jyotirmay arya sir uttam chandel ji shushil sinha sir who is also our alumni mr dr ab mukherjee and i am also thankful to dr p s chawla it is actually brain child of chawla sir along with our global coordinator and he many of our alumni are coming and giving very precious time and very precious information of to our students many time students being in chatisgarh they feel that we are disconnected but this global series has proven that we are not disconnected we are very well connected with all our all our alumni i am also thankful to hod mechanical and hod electronics dr meshram ji for informing their students and putting them to the task we are also thankful to sri vivek singh rathor ji who is the coordinator coordinator for all it arrangements making contact with um, speakers and i am also thankful for dp for her efficient anchoring during the seminar thank you so much sir have a nice day thank you so much sir thank you, thank you so much so now uh, we are at the end of our session so at the end i would Uh, be very thankful for everyone we appreciate you appreciate you being here thank you again for joining us today wish you a great day ahead ahead thank you so much thank you so much thank, thank you so much thank, thank you, you so much for your presentation thank you abhijit thank, thank you, you so much friends. sir all friends we had very nice time thank you thank you so much sir precious good to listen you again precious any time in fact you have opened our eyes that it's a emerging area